Hello, my name is Doug Wood, a student here at FHS. Frankfurt High School is proud to introduce a new program entitled Tradition of Excellence. The program will highlight hot dog alumni and connect them with the current students enrolled at FHS today. The student conducting the interview and the alumnus will have a connection. This could be a connection outside the school, a similar interest in activities completed during high school, or perhaps an interest in the occupation of the alumnus. During the Tradition of Excellence interview, the same three questions will always be asked. We want to learn more about the alumnus' activities and life during high school, what the alumnus has been doing since high school, and finally, a piece of advice that the alumnus would have shared with his or her high school self. The ultimate goals of the program are to highlight the lives of our FHS alumni, connect students with the people who share their interests, and to inspire our students to be successful. I hope you enjoy this series as we talk to our FHS alumni about their careers and hopefully they inspire you to find the career that fits you. Hello, my name is Alex Lopez. I'm a senior this year and I'm, and I'm interviewing Esmeralda Cruz, alumni class of 2006. Hi Alex, it's good Hi. to be here with you this morning. It's good to be with you too. Thank you. So uh, what were you involved with in year in high school? So in high school, one of my first opportunities was a program called Learning to Lead. It was, mm -hmm. we were actually the, the, first, um, the first group that went through that program. That was during my sophomore year. And I think what that program did is allowed me to learn the different sectors within my community and how each sector worked. Um, and the reason why that's important is because moving forward, you're aware of some of the opportunities that may be available, as well as what are some of the possible career opportunities in the future. Um, after learning to lead, I got involved. Science was one of the subjects that I really enjoyed. And I actually thought about going into the science field when I was going. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, when I was yeah. in high school. And back then, um, there were two teachers here. One of them was Miss Ba, which I unfortunately <laughs> you guys didn't get to meet, but she was a tremendous teacher um, and she passed away. And now you have um, strides for Stacy. Mm -hmm. That was Stacy Ba. That was, oh. yeah, that, that she was an amazing, amazing teacher. and. She, along with another teacher who's now Mrs. Fortner, and back then used to be Miss, Miss Range Bar, they both um, introduced me to a biology program that was gonna be taking place at Purdue during the summertime. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like a three week program. So I got, I got started in that, I think it was my summer after my sophomore year, I did that program and then I continued to do it every summer. Mm -hmm. And when I returned the second year, I came back as alumni. And then the third year, I actually came back to do some research at Purdue. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then I think you guys still have FCOM, right? Do you guys have FCOM is like the introduction of what high school is like for your incoming eighth graders. Um, I'm not sure, sure if we have FCOM or not. <laughs> so that was another thing that I was involved in. So I worked with the team of, um, of peers and we organized activities. Mm -hmm. uh, so before a school officially started, the eighth graders would come in, we would give them tours, but we would also, you know, have lunch at the cafeteria, kind of give them that experience of the lockers and the di distance and walking from different classes. Yeah, like we give tours, but like, I'm not sure what FCOM is, but like, yeah, because last year, like I was like one of the tour guides for the eighth graders, so, like, you know, they were, in, they were coming to this high school, mm -hmm. they were like, you know, freshmen this year. Yeah, yeah, so FCOM was like a day devoted just to eighth graders and it was like a whole mm -hmm. day and it ranged from very serious things to fun things to kind of break down the ice make them feel comfortable give them a little bit of the experience of what their high school career was going to be like and the the fun, the other thing that i was involved in was the national honor society mm -hmm. that's national honor society is a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> it, it is and at the same time it's it gives the opportunities to develop skills if, if you want right those opportunities we mm -hmm. i think one of the things you know about looking back when i was in high school and working with high school students now which is one of the things that i'm able to do through my job is, is reminding students you're going to get a, as much out of something as much as the time that you're willing to put into something so mm -hmm. if you join something just for the sake of putting something on your resume but you're really not involved or not active you may not feel like you benefited as much once that concludes. Yes. Um, I also did one year of DECA. So, uh, and, and I know you're in DECA. <laughs> yeah. um, and Mrs. Um, 
back then, she had a different last name, but Miss Bishop, amazing teacher too, um, and gave me- She's a wonderful teacher. She is. Greatest business teacher. Yeah, no, she, she really is. And I think mm -hmm. FHS is very fortunate to have her because she, she understands what she's teaching yeah. and she has passion and you can tell that. And for me, I did DECA and you know, sometimes you do things and you're like, maybe this isn't the sort of my future route, but still you explore it, you see it, mm -hmm. and that way you can make more informed decisions. Yeah, well, I love DECA, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you're taking, that you're embracing it and that yeah. you're, you know. Always. I'm the best business teacher. Yeah. But uh, so what do you do now? So I'm, I work at the Purdue Extension office here in Clinton County. And Purdue Extension is basically an extension of Purdue University. There is, a, there is an office in almost every county throughout the state of Indiana. So there's 92 counties in total. Um, and I work as the health and human sciences educator. And I've been in that position for eight years now. Right. Well, that's a successful you know, career. Um, how did you do in high school? How how did I do in high school? Yeah, uh, I think I did. <laughs> I think I did pretty well. I I actually ended up uh, nine out of my class, and oh. um, it's interesting because some of the classes that were the most challenging are classes that would not probably not be challenging to the average high school student today. But you know, a, a lot of things have changed, and one of those is, is the technological advances. Mm -hmm. When I was going in high school, computers were relatively new. Not every single family had a computer at home. Um, and, and, and so like one of the classes that was tough for me, which I think if I would be a high school student now, it wouldn't be because I would, I'd be used to working yeah. with a computer, but it was the, the keyboarding class, for example. Um, I, I always wanted to do well in school. I was one of those students that um, was focused. I always had this dream of going to college. Um, and I think part of the reason for that, that dream was my parents' story. My parents have always been those huge motivators and mm -hmm. the reasoning behind the why I always try to do my best. Um, my mom has a third grade education. My dad has a sixth grade education. And my dad specifically, both, both of my parents, so I know my dad isn't exaggerating because my mom has said the same thing. My dad was really good in school and he loved school. Um, but when he completed sixth grade, he was pulled out to start working for the family. And so I always thought, you know, I think my dad would have continued on in college, uh, in school if he would have had the opportunity. And I almost felt like a responsibility, but a positive one to kind of carry that forward. And mm -hmm. anytime I would, you know, have uh, be challenged in the class or felt like I didn't understand it or just couldn't do it, I always remembered this is an opportunity. It's it should be a right, but it's not a right for a lot of children around yeah. the world. And so look for it, seek that help, do your best and move forward the best that you can always. So what advice would you give yourself when you're 16 years old? I think one of the things looking back, I would say be intentional about making sure that your actions align with your end goal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have dreams, but if our actions don't align, they stay as dreams. They don't become goals. And sometimes there's a disconnect between where we want to be and what we're doing to get there. So like for me, for example, my goal was to go to college and thank goodness I did. But I can tell you that part of the reason why I ended up in college was because I had wonderful people that were willing to help me and guide me along the way. Um, it was my senior year in high school. It was March, my senior mm -hmm. year in high school. OK, and I knew I wanted to go to college. I had already applied to a couple of colleges, but I had no financial assistance at that point in time. And I knew for my parents it was going to be really hard to afford college. And through learning to lead, for example, we um, we had an alumni event with the president of Purdue at that time, Dr. Jiski, and he came in and he and I had three five minute conversation and he gave me a full ride to go to Purdue, which I look at that now and I'm like, I was so fortunate that that happened. But if that wouldn't have taken place, I wonder if I would, would that 
journey would have looked like in regards to that financial assistance to make my dream of going to college a reality. So just make sure that your actions align with whatever your end goal is. And I would say that the second thing is um, for people that that find themselves in positions of organizing and coordinating things, um, you know, sometimes things don't go as planned. If you're a planner and things don't go as planned, try to find the opportunity for growth, but not to beat yourself over something that didn't go as planned. Um, and that's still something that I'm trying to learn today. <laughs> Because sometimes, you know, out of your day, you may do 10 things, nine go really well, one doesn't. And, and, and you have to be intentional about not focusing on that one thing. Mm -hmm. um, look at that and see, see what could I've done better, but then move on from that. Don't, okay. don't let that continue to bother you and other, other things moving forward. All right. Well, I'll take that advice into consideration. But thank you, Esmeralda, for coming in and interviewing with me today. Like, thank you for tuning in. Have a good day.